All right, let's get started. Thank you everyone for joining this week's edition of Data Theorem's live demo series. Um, our featured speaker is Nick Polaszewski, and he will be talking about mobile phishing. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Nick. Take it away. Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Ryan. So yes, to Ryan's point, I will be talking about how, you know, uh, attackers are taking advantage of COVID and mobile phishing now that, you know, a lot of people are working from home and even using personal devices for work as well. Oops. Hold on. There we go. Oops. So really quickly about um, Data Theorem. We were founded in 2013 out of Palo Alto, um, and each of our executives have more than 15 years of cybersecurity experience, um, resulting in a bunch of research books and you know $4 billion security in security acquisitions. We've also won some really cool awards from Gartner as a cool vendor, um, InfoSec award winner. Um, and then here's just a list of some of our customers as well. We also go from a full stack application security approach. So not only do we do mobile security and mobile phishing, we also look at single page web applications, APIs, REST, RESTful APIs, GraphQL, and even the cloud services as well. So here's the agenda of what we're going to cover. Basically today I'm gonna to cover what is a counterfeit application? What is a rogue mobile application? Um, and this really hits home for me because this is something that I've been doing or have done um, in my first job outside of the Air Force in cybersecurity. But before I kind of go into this agenda and show you what a counterfeit app is all about, how you can tell the difference between them, I just want to go over the what is happening right now um, and the current events. So like I mentioned, this is, you know, how attackers are taking care of, or taking advantage of mobile phishing during COVID. So basically what is happening is the pharmaceutical companies that are coming out with vaccines for the pandemic, people are trying to get information around, right? Um, and the best way to kind of gain that information is by phishing mobily. Mobile devices are used in many different ways for pharmaceutical companies, right? They are used in ways for trialing new um, vaccines, trialing new products that they're coming out with, and people are trying to take advantage of that and basically gain information and knowledge into what these pharmaceutical companies are doing, right? As you can imagine, whoever does have that successful vaccine is going to be making a really pretty penny. And if people can get their hands on it before, you know, other companies are releasing that, um, I'm sure they're doing it for that financial gain, right? So not only is are they doing this through um, text messaging, but they're also creating applications um, that look like other applications to gain insights into potentially gaining your credentials, um, even just potentially sending you to a link to make money off an affiliate link, right? But you don't know um what that application is doing and sometimes people don't realize that they're downloading a counterfeit application because it almost looks like a spitting image of the other application right and lastly um the whole mobile phishing is pretty real right now in the past you know five days i've even gotten um sms text messages asking about an order confirmation that i did not have that i know i did not have and then once responding to it, just saying, I don't have an order, they'll send you a link and just say, well, you know, just go ahead and check this link. Well, you got to just be a little bit smarter than that and make sure you don't click on any of those links. They might not be super dangerous at the moment, but who knows what will happen around the corner as, you know, it's very easy to basically take any APK of an Android application and potentially add or inject malicious code into it, right? And I'm gonna go over all of that in our tool um, after I kind of go over what a counterfeit application is or what I like to call a rogue, rogue mobile application. So the overview, a counterfeit app is basically an unauthorized app that exploits the reach and user of a brand or mobile application for financial gain. Um, you know, a lot of times, 
in other app stores outside of Google Play and Apple uh, Play Store or the Apple Store. Um, people are taking like the Netflix app, for example, and embedding an ad into it just to make money. But, you know, as you know, Netflix does not promote ads. So sometimes if you're downloading an application that looks exactly like uh, the other application, but it is not and it wasn't actually published by them, they can add in these little things. And, you know, that is financial gain right there if you are adding ads into the Netflix app and people are using that Netflix application. Um, this is some of the counterfeit applications. It looks like right here, this is actually the true application. Um, this does not look like a true application, but ju it just goes to show there are people that are out there trying to counterfeit your applications and make it look like yours so that people are using theirs instead of yours. This happens a lot on Christmas uh, for Google Play and for the Apple Store. As I think it was about four years ago, um, a fake Alexa app got added to the stores. And I think some somewhere in the couple of million downloads, um, you just got to pay attention because sometimes those counterfeit apps, apps actually slip through the cracks. And it's a big time for that coming up here because Christmas is what only... 16 days away so just be careful make sure the application that you're downloading is actually coming from the developers of the company that you're downloading the application from so kind of just went over that i don't want to waste too much time because i want to get into the tool and kind of show you how all that works for us types of counterfeit apps this is very interesting. You know, there's clones. So like basic direct clones, right? Where they take that APK and they might not add any code to it. They might add a permission to get some of that data from your phone or from your device. But there's also brand abuse where they're literally taking your brand and your name and putting that on the application to make it look like yours. Like I said, clone, you can copy of the original app binary. It appears in the third party app stores, um, could contain some code injections, and it reaches the unintended audiences. This is why we do this for our customers, though, is because, you know, financial apps have made their ways onto um, third party application stores. And we don't want any brand reputational loss from you guys. We don't want the consumer thinking, hey, you guys put your app on a third party app store. Um, and now my account has been uh, compromised. It's your guys' fault. Actually, it's not the um, brand's fault or the company's fault. It's kind of the consumer's fault for not paying attention. But this is why we make sure to, you know, scour all of the third-party application stores and provide you with that data so you can go ahead and request removal from those application stores. This just goes to show how easy it is to actually clone an application. This is a quick program that allows you to copy and clone. Um, there's many of these out there. It's not hard to do, and this is how people are doing it. The brand abuse is basically the apps that use your logo, trademarks, potential copyrights to promote a fraudulent app. It could appear in a Google Play Store. Um, it could behave maliciously by nature and it could exploit unaware audiences. As you can see here, Uber Russia, the publisher is definitely not Uber, um, but then again, I can't speak Russian, so I don't know, but that is definitely not the legitimate application. You can tell by the logo um, is not the same. Counterfeit apps, they're used to make money, right? They're used for phishing attacks to grab your uh, potential um, information and harvest your credentials. And then, like I mentioned earlier, those extra permissions. So basically, what I'm going to show you in the Data Theorem platform is how we can see what the um, malicious publisher has added into that code. And a lot of the times, it is extra permissions. They can sell those SMS logs. They can sell those call logs. And sometimes, they'll even steal your pictures off of your camera roll as well. The business impact, you know, these applications make news. 
The one that I was talking about right here is a fake Amazon Alexa setup application. And it infiltrated the Apple's app store and was the number six utility because everybody on Christmas was getting, you know, their Amazon Alexas and they weren't paying attention. They were so excited to set it up that they downloaded the first application that came up as Alexa setup didn't without realizing it was by a different publisher and could have been potentially malicious. And I think it was as well. Um, it has negative impact to businesses, you know, loss of revenue, account takeover and brand reputation. This is what we're trying to basically be proactive about when it comes to our mobile customers is we want to cut that off absolutely immediately. And I will tell you, a lot of people don't realize that their applications are in third party app stores because it's not something you really think about being in America. We have, you know, the Apple, the Apple store and the Google Play Store. So that's kind of really all we think about. Right. But we got to open it up to the whole world and realize that there's tons of application stores globally. And there's another problem with that that I'll be going over in just a moment. So like I mentioned, the global challenge, right? We're over here on the left hand side. We see Google Play and, and Apple. But on the right hand side here, there's all these other app stores and there's many more than what are shown on the screen currently. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is exactly where I was getting to the global third party app store challenge. The middle right here, lack of policing or governance. I've done this for a living where I've had to send removal requests to these application stores. Um, we probably weren't doing it the correct way or the most private way um, years ago at some of my old companies, but that is very hard. Sometimes the app store people do not even respond to you. So you, you got to keep sending those removal requests over and over again, and hopefully just tire them out. Um, you can actually go to their domain to whoever hosts their, their domain and send that over there too. Um, if you have a legal letter from our customers, we can do that for you. Um, also the last thing I was going to say is keep in mind you want to continue to monitor those third party app stores as well because once those applications get removed there's no telling if they're coming back when they're coming back um because they can literally just add the application again to the app store so you've got to continue to automate this and to basically um look at this kind of stuff every day and be aware of it global whack-a-mole there's tons of app stores everywhere and a bunch of third party uh, or a bunch of rogue mobile applications that sit in those app stores. And we wanna make sure that we are trying to get all of them down for you. So this is the last portion of the PowerPoint before I get into the platform, the benefits of automated security, right? This is what I'm talking about, automate the store crawling. So we will crawl all the stores every day to see if your applications are there. Um, once they are removed, we kind of keep an audit history of it. And if we see it come back to the app store, uh, we'll notify you or create an alert. Machine learning, identify the misused brand elements and then automate removal. That takedown process that I was talking about where you can request removal on any of those applications that should not be in those third-party app stores, we can automate that for you guys.